Commissioner Mary Ann, arriving in Phoenix for an Arizona vacation, is greeted by Joyce, who is wearing a typical Western squaw dress from the Arizona Fashion Council. After shopping in nearby Scottsdale, Mary Ann models her own squaw dress with mandarin neckline. Now, off to Camelback Inn, nestled in Arizona's Valley of the Sun. For traveling, squaw dresses are pretty and practical. After washing, the full skirt can be pleated by just drying it in a stocking. Strolling Camelback's grounds, Joyce wears a one-piece outfit with an off-the-shoulder neckline. Mary Ann's two-tone skirt and blouse is trimmed with ball fringe and has a bow at the neckline. The call of the wide open spaces beckons the girls to the corral. Mary Ann wears a typical western outfit, frontier pants, cotton blouse, and Stetson hat. Joyce models an overblouse of velvet, patterned after those worn by the Indian princesses who long ago rode here in the Valley of the Sun. Welcome to today's Arizona Hip Historian Happy Hour Tour with Marshall Shore. I'm Leslie Watson, the AARP Arizona Volunteer. AARP is the nation's largest nonprofit, nonpartisan organization dedicated to empowering people 50 and older to choose how they live as they age. With a nationwide presence and nearly 38 million members across the nation and over 900,000 in Arizona, AARP strengthens communities and advocates for what matters most to families, health security, financial stability, and personal fulfillment. In the month of April, we will focus on fraud prevention by providing specific tools and information to help consumers with knowledge and tools to spot and avoid scams. ARP is a wise friend and fierce defender of consumers. The Fraud Watch Network is here providing free resources that will help you spot scams Get guidance from fraud specialists and help you feel more secure knowing we advocate at the federal, state, and local levels to protect consumers and enforce the law. In April, we will launch the gift card scam initiative and focus on education and awareness against this type of scam. Visit us for resources and information at www.aarp.org forward slash fraud watch network or at www dot aarp dot org forward slash az. Now on to our hip historian. Take it away, Marshall. <laughs> Well, hello everyone. Good evening. I'm so happy you've joined us on this amazing April 22nd. So thank you all so much for being here. Now I know there's a few folks watching us on Twitch, on YouTube, on Facebook. And you know, the best thing about this is if you miss an episode, you can go back and watch it on Facebook or on YouTube because that's where they're archived. So today, is all kinds of amazing things. So um, basically, actually April 25th, back in 1858, is when the Senate ratified a revised treaty for the Gadsden Purchase. Now that really basically gave us about 30,000 square miles of Mexico, that a, a chunk of that became Arizona, as well as New Mexico. Um, it was ratified just the end of this month in just a few days. And then in the end of June was when that purchase was actually made for about $10 million. So it is also Earth Day. 
So I hope everyone was kind to the earth today. Now it is also International Guitar Month. So, you know, I think ukuleles fall into that. And this weekend is kind of exceptional, especially for ukuleles. Um, it is Arizona Tiki Oasis. This is the second one that they've done in Arizona and they are doing a takeover of the Valley Ho. So all kinds of fun start today. There actually is an art show going on at the Valley Ho later this evening. I might try to make it over there after this. Um, I know uh, my friend Ben, who's actually our guest, is going to be our, we're doing a tour of a neighborhood that you might not be familiar with, that you'll know a little bit more about by the end of this evening, as well as oh so much more fun at Tiki Oasis at the Valley Ho all weekend. So come by, check it out. Lots of fun will be had. So what can you expect today? Well, you know, there's a little bit of trivia. We'll do some show and tell because I have a house full of stuff and it's all got a story. Um, we'll also do a little bit of music history as well as talk about a little town up on Route 66 that has some tiki history. As well as there is a cocktail and, of course, a special guest. And so tonight it's Ben. I'll bring him on in a few minutes. But if this is your first time, you might be wondering, who is that man and why is he on my screen? Well, my name is Marshall Shore. And basically, 21 years ago, I was working in a library in Brooklyn. It was this beautiful Carnegie building and decided to. You know, I had had enough of snow, of slush, and decided that I would trade that for a little 1950 library that was in South Phoenix. But there was this, this rich oral tradition of kind of how the community had evolved. And that really got me thinking, we should talk about that modern history. So that's where I first started kind of forming my niche. Um, that building has since been demolished, and there is a brand new spanking beautiful library by Richard and Bauer that is now in its place. So now to get here, had to load everything we own into a big orange cube, a U-Haul. And you know, they have their international world headquarters right here in the Valley of the Sun. Now, when we got here, we promptly moved into a beautiful 1956 ranch. Now, the house is pretty much a time capsule, but when we moved in, it was oh so many tones of beige on the outside. I'm happy to say now it is a much more simplified two-tone of seafoam and cantaloupe. There's what my kitchen looks like today. All that buttercream yellow tile in the wall oven with no window, as well as the matching stove top with the push buttons set in the wall. So it really is, we try to really keep the house to period. Those are all original parts and they still work like a charm. Now, as soon as I got here, all I kept hearing about how there, there was no history here, but I knew that wasn't true because every time I went for an adventure, whether it was on foot, on a bike, in a car, I came face to face with so many amazing people, places, and stories. And that really kind of got me going. And then there's that post-war boom that I think in so many ways made the Arizona that we all know and love today. All those GIs that either were stationed here, trained here, or passed through on the way to somewhere else. And after the war, they were moving here in huge numbers, looking for a whole new way of life. And sometimes they were looking for a house just like mine. And then, you know, how did I become the hip historian? Well, you know, every February 14th, Valentine's Day, we have a big celebration for ourselves here in Arizona for Statehood Day. And back in 2012, we did an event across the entire state. And on February 14th at the old state capitol, they had a main stage and all kinds of fun going on. And someone gave me 15 minutes to talk about anything I wanted to. And I chose about one of the most favorite events because it involved music, fashion, oh, so many things. And it was called Mask of the Yellow Moon. 
It ran from 1926 to 1955. At its height, it had about 5,000 high school and college students performing. Now, I was lucky enough to find these three dresses that were from the late 30s in a box and allowed to borrow them and had some amazing friends don those dresses as they paraded around the stage as we had a chance to talk about what the history of the Mask of Yellow Moon was and meant to Arizona. And, you know, a lot of what I was doing was lectures, tours, and, you know, that all kind of changed. Um, we now do a second Saturday tour. Actually, the one coming up next month is the last one. We're going to take a break for the summer of kind of haunted history downtown. And I know um, my co-host Deb actually just found some things today that will be included on that new tour coming up. And they are fully masked. We will be wearing microphones under our masks the way everybody can hear us. And so those are always a lot of fun. Now, if during the course of the show you want to reach out, some of you already discovered that there's a chat off to the side. You can go ahead and chat in there. After the show, if you think of something, you can hit me up on Facebook, on Instagram, even email. It's all good. And, you know, because people are my best source of stories. We just did an event uh, at the Care Cultural Center a few days ago for Arizona, kind of kicking off Arizona Opera and their 50th year. So we're going to have a lot more stories coming out about that. So that's going to be really exciting as that pans out. So I'm going to be relying on some of you folks to remember some of your favorite moments from the opera and other performing arts. Now, I will ask you, if you're watching on Facebook, there is a share button at the very bottom. If you can click on that, I would sure appreciate it. So that way, all your friends can see how much fun we're having with Arizona history. Now we're ready for a bit of show and tell. So, you know, so we're going to talk since we're kind of doing a little kind of TKC. So, you know, there's nothing more classic than tiki than drinking out of a coconut. Now, this is a particular coconut because let's see if that shows up. So this is actually from Trader Vic's. So Trader Vic's, um, they had their first restaurant here in Phoenix. It opened up in 1962. And let's see. And there we go. That's what it looked like. It was on the trendy Fifth Avenue and was a huge hit. Um, sadly, it did indeed close its doors in 1990. Um, there was a brief period where in the mid 2000s, they had a, another Trader Vic's open up at the Valley Ho. Um, the building is still there. But sadly, the Trader Vic's is no longer there. But if you go by Susan Public House, you can still see the very tiki-esque kind of the roof, the roof that very much has that pitch. And even inside, you can still see some of the remnants from that original Trader Vic's. Now, of course, it would not be happy hour without a cocktail. And so I am happy to always be working with PJ and the Hotel Valley Ho as PJ comes up with some amazing cocktails. And so this week we have seven and a half year itch because that's really kind of our theme is Scottsdale. And so, oh my gosh. So this has a little bit of blonde rum, some rye, some pineapple rum, passion fruit, grapefruit syrup. I mean, you can kind of see that Tiki-esque. And then he did, there is a company that's owned locally called Scotchdale. And so it does have a spritz, just a little spray of Scotchdale eight year scotch in it. Now, he makes it really easy for me to do because let's my silent bartender Bob be able to make a cocktail with no problem because it comes in this great little to go tainer. And so all I need to do is unscrew the lid, pour that into my coconut, my ceramic coconut from Trader Vic's. And there I go. 
I have a craft cocktail right there. So cheers, everyone. All right. So now let me take that off because nobody needs to see him now. All right. So cheers, everyone. Seven and a half year itch. Oh, that is oh so tiki fied. I would even say it's tiki rific. So, yes, expect lots of bad puns as time. Oh, and, and Sarah says you put the lime in the coconut. Well, I put all kinds of things in the coconut, and it was tasty. Oh my gosh. So you might notice, okay, so actually let me go so you can see, oh, wrong direction. So let's do this. So this is my green screen because we're talking about Scottsdale. And so my friend Anita just posted, and let's see, and I can actually show it, that her husband thinks that that no bad station wagon right there in the street might belong to his grandmother. How cool is that? So, you know, that's always the fun of these is you never know quite what's going to pop up or the fun or the other facts. So, oh my gosh. So through the miracle of modern technology, I'm going to bring on Ben so we can share the screen together. And let's do that. So that way you can see all that instead of just Scott Dale. It's the whole day. Hello. Oh, I can't hear you. Sorry about that. I should know better. No, nope, no. Nope. I am good in yourself. Good, man. Oh, my gosh. Are you ready for a fun weekend of Tiki Tiki Tiki? You know it. Indeed. Yeah. So tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, Ben. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I've been here now for five years. I moved back from Los Angeles five years ago, but I was here for 12 years before I was in L.A. I've seen this town change so much in 20 plus years. It's just crazy. So I currently live in the Scottsdale Garden Apartment District. And even though I think I've seen you on a few things, I mean, obviously you're kind of hard to forget. Uh, we'd never actually met until just last Sunday, last Saturday, actually. Right, exactly. So, Blair connected us. because, was like, hey, you know, I want to do a tour of this neighborhood, so. Yeah, so here we are. Uh, you know, it's, it's an honor to be on your show. I love it. I love it so far. I've, I've watched a couple of the other episodes. It's really great. So thank you for having me on and, and uh, for, you know, fast friends. I wish I was drinking. I'd, I'd toast to you, but I don't drink. That's okay. You know, we've actually, um, we've done a couple that were mocktails because um, I think we did the city of Chandler and we just did a fancy lemonade because Dr. Chandler was indeed a teetotaler. Uh -oh. So, you know, all that matters is you're drinking something because it is the desert and you do need to keep refreshing. Yes. I, oh, I drive, this is what I'm drinking right now. These Izzy's. We used to sell these at the newsstand. These are really good. They're sugary. There's a lot of sugar though. So, all right. So we are going to do some trivia. Yeah. Now, the beauty of trivia is, is the fact that unlike a lot of bars where they just kind of go through the trivia and then they're done, we're actually going to go through the trivia then we'll take a little bit of a music break. And oh my gosh, we actually get to play music tonight, which is kind of exciting. Because um, we normally don't get to do that. But then we'll come back and actually talk about some of those answers. Actually, not some of them. We'll talk about all of the answers. So there's some really good stories focusing on Scottsdale. So now you can keep track of your score. Some folks do it on a pad and paper. Some folks do it in the chat. Um, my friend Will did it on his thigh and a magic marker. So I guess when he was wearing shorts, everyone got to see his answers for trivia. You can do it however you would like, whatever makes you happy, because we're all about the fun here. Yes. Oh, all right. So our first question, how did Scottsdale get its name? A, did Scott Shrinkers name it? <laughs> That's a good B one. for Antonio Scott or C Scott Dale or was it D Winfield Scott which one of those did Scottsdale get its name from 
All right, moving on to question two. And you know, I think we said the word, so I'm gonna take a sip just because. All right, question two. What director stayed at the Valley Ho while on location to shoot the opening scene of his first major hit film in downtown Phoenix? Was it A, Steven Spielberg? Was it B, Alfred Hitchcock? C, Cecil B. DeMille? Or D, Gus Van Sant? So what famous director stayed at the Valley Ho while he was shooting his first major hit film? All right. That's a good one, huh? Yeah, no, that is a good one. I mean, yeah. there's, I mean, good gosh. I mean, we could do like an entire episode at some point just on that movie and everything else. Oh, God, I know. It's just such a great film. Indeed. All right. Question three. What music group built Los Cuatros in Scottsdale? A, The Brothers Four. B, The Kingston Trio. C, the Beach Boys, or D, Dyke and the Blazers? What music group built Los Cuatros in Scottsdale? All right, question four. What developer unsuccessfully brought their own Beverly Hills brand of luxury to the then brand new condo market, yet one big at strip malls? All right. Was it A, Gucci, B, Malfoy, C, Hamadi, or D, Prada? So which one of those luxury brands from Beverly Hills tried to make it in the condo market here, but wasn't very successful? And Sarah, well, you know, Sarah, actually we'll talk a little bit about that. She asked if the movie Psycho was filmed in Phoenix. If you know, if you watch the beginning of that, they actually do a pan across Phoenix. That's why December 11th is Psycho Day in the city of Phoenix. And I know every, for the last few years, well, actually, I don't think they did it this year. Actually, last year um, because of COVID, but they actually show Psycho on Psycho Day. Huh. Was that the day that they filmed that scene? I've never heard that. That's um, well, it actually, so when you do the opening, when you watch the opening scene, there's actually yeah. that date flashed on the movie screen. Yeah, right. Was that the day though that they shot it there? It wasn't, was it? No, no, it was just oh. the made up day. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really like, you know, you can day. make it whenever. So, so yeah, and there's all kinds of myths and stories about that movie here. All right, question five. What was the name of the epic annual pool party that took over the Valley Ho Hotel pool in the mid-2000s? A, Poolside. B, H2O. C, Slow Burn. Or D, Slip and Slide. What was the name of the annual pool party that took over the Hotel Valley Ho? All right. The, the area behind south of the Valley Ho is called a Soho for south of the Ho. <laughs> That's a good one. I've heard that before. <laughs> so um, B, Scottsdale Garden Apartment District. C, the Faux Resort District. Or D, Little Palm Springs. What is that area directly oh. behind the Valley Ho called? All right. What prolific architect designed this building, Deo? Was it A, Haver, B, Beetle, C, Gonzalez, or D, Varney? Now, those are all famous architects here in the Valley of the Sun. So it was designed by one of them, but which one? D, D, D. All right. So moving on to question eight, who designed Scottsdale's first town hall? Oh my gosh, those are the same answers we had from the last one. Why was it A, Haver, 
B, Beetle, C, Gonzalez, or D, Varney? Who designed Scottsdale's first town hall? All right. What is the name of the Hollywood actress who untimely's death was recently re-examined by LA prosecutors? Now here's a hint, she drowned. <laughs> so was it A, Naya Rivera, B, Natalie Wood, C, Whitney Houston, or D, Jessica Savage? Which one of those people has a connection to the Valley Ho? And also their death was recently re-examined. All right. So come up to our very last question. And Hotel Valley Ho opened in 1956. Who was the architect? A, Benny Gonzalez. B, Frank Lloyd Wright. C, Ralph Haver. Or D, Edward Varney. Which one of those architects did the Valley Ho? All right. Well, while you're getting your answers locked in, because you, know, you might have some questions on some of those, maybe, hopefully you're not sitting there Googling it, trying to figure out, oh, what's the answer? Because, you know, the fun of this is not the fact that we're all going to be winners at the end of this, because we'll all have stories about those answers. But today we're going to talk a little bit about some Arizona music history. And of course, it's going to be a little Tiki-esque. Um, so Mr. Ho's Orchestratica. Now, Mr. Ho's Orchestratica actually is Brian O'Neill, who grew up in Sunny Slope. And so it's actually kind of a dual focus. So it's, a, it's an ensemble where he has a quintet that performs original global jazz, as well as an orchestratica orchestra that performs music that sounds like Esquivel. So he was kind of, you know, pop in the 60s, that very lounge type thing, really makes you want a nice dirty martini. And so he's on the East. So Brian's on the East Coast with a 22-piece band that performs this, you know, for lack of a better term, I would say space age pop. Huh. And we're actually going to hear from the quintet as they perform Phoenix Goodbye, an original piece written by Brian.
So they actually, um, I think two years ago, did a CD release event up at Tally West, and I was lucky enough to introduce them and got to see them live on a stage. And, you know, when you walk in and you see a vibraphone on stage, yeah. you know, it's going to be a good night. And indeed it was. Oh, so much fun. I bet. And so, all right. So now we're going to get some answers. All right. So how did Scottsdale get its name? Do you want me to answer this? Of course. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Well, it was named after Winfield Scott. Uh, he was one of the first people to really pioneer this whole uh, idea of, uh, of turning this into, he called it a health oasis. Basically, he described a spa uh, in, in a couple of different times uh, in the newspapers. He was the first to grow, uh, as far as we know, uh, he was the first to grow peanuts out here and brought citrus and all of these other things to town and, and you know, just was a really uh, an incredible guy. He actually has two towns named after him. So there are two towns oh, wow. named Castile. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Where's the other one? I think it's in California, but I'm not 100% sure. I was trying to find wow. that before we started today. Yeah, he was lucky enough to have, I guess that's what you did back then is you just gave people and, you know, they're like, oh, name is Scottsdale. Yeah. So it happened twice though. I mean, how lucky is that guy? Um, yeah, he uh, he's really the, the one who's uh, behind all of that. So. All right. Now, didn't he also plant some olive trees? He did. In fact, a lot of the trees that they planted back then, they were kind of they were superstitious more than anything. I don't know what where they would have gotten the the proof that olive trees kept vermin away in birds, but that was what the belief was back then. And so there are several uh, olive trees in the Garden Apartment District that match up almost identical to the physicality of three known historic olive trees that are growing a little bit closer to City Hall. Over here, though, we have about 20 of them. They're all beautiful and, and very well maintained. There are also a lot of mature uh, pine trees and, and uh, these types of, of large, large evergreen type trees. So those weren't just planted 50 years ago. No, those were planted 100 years ago or more. Right. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah. All right. So what director stayed at the Valley Ho while he was shooting a location in downtown Phoenix for the opening scene of what we now know as Psycho? There's a famous photo, actually, of Alfred Hitchcock and Natalie. And I'm sorry. And uh, I'm sorry. Who's the female in that? The lead in that? Why do I, am I forgetting her name? Uh, I'm Janet Lee. Grace Kelly. That was, or no. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. What's her name? Janet Lee. Janet Lee. Duh. There's a photo of those two somewhere. I've seen it before of them at the Valley Hill. Ah, I bet they have it in their own archives. Probably is yeah. it up on the wall? It's not hanging up on the wall. There are some oh. photos of like there are some photos of Natalie or of uh, Natalie Wood, of course. There's photos of uh, Janet Lee, and then there was another. Oh, Jaja Gabor. Now that those are that's that looks like fun. Those photos. Wow, with Jaja, that would have been quite the party. Yep. She was hanging out here, having a good time, having a good old time. She looks young in the photos. She, she probably was pretty young then. Wow. Yeah. But if you go through that, you know, that, that area that not everybody knows about, that everybody's welcome to check out there, you know, on the second floor there, it's pretty, pretty cool. But I don't think they have even half of the stuff up. 
Yeah, I know. It's like I've, I've looked at some of the archives, and they have a they have a lot of photos which they don't use. Yep. So. Yeah. All right. So, question three: What music group built a, the complex? Los this would Cuatro. be Los Cuatros, named for the brothers. Four. They commissioned Benny Gonzalez to design that that house for them. They were they all lived there. Uh, I'm not sure if they were apartments. I think they were uh, like more like short term rentals, like you know, like the rest of the buildings in the neighborhood, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, you know, it's possible that they were you know enterprising young men. Now, with, now they're condos. Now they're still very very nice. But they're built out of uh, out of solid cinder block, and you really didn't see a whole lot of that in multifamily. But then again, that you know that multifamily, even that phrase, that was brand new, uh, you know, after the war. And it's really unique because Benny Gonzalez didn't do that type of thing. He didn't. He wasn't really known for that. He did a lot of, of buildings. He worked in civics, and uh, you know, built the Scottsdale City Hall, and uh, also the library and the Scottsdale Center for the Arts. He also did the original, it's all been yanked out now, but he did the original urban planning for the Scottsdale Civic Center Plaza. So he oh, did the, you know, I didn't realize that. Yeah. And then he did have several houses uh, in Scottsdale, but very rarely do they sell. And very rarely does even a condo over at uh, Los Cuatros sell. People, they buy them and they keep them and, you know, pass them on, I guess. I don't know. There are very few will go up for sale in there. Yeah. Oh, other, cool have... things, other cool things is the uh, the swimming pool is shaped like a guitar, um, and there's there's a beautiful little pool house next to the pool there, and underneath that is a full steam sauna, but that's been closed for a while. But uh, they really did a nice job. You know, those are true amenities for that year and that era. They were doing that stuff back then. Yeah, that would have been su that would have been super luxury. Yeah. Yep. Have all that. Yep. Um, and then Bruce does say the other town name for Winfield Scott is Winfield, Kansas. Oh, Winfield, Kansas. There you go. So, see, I mean, that's why I'm so glad that people are sitting there checking facts on us to make yeah, sure right. we're that's not great. fudging the history. <laughs> and so, all right. So, question four. What developer was unsuccessful at bringing their Beverly Hills luxury to the condo market? Yet one big strip Maloofs. Maloofs, yeah. And you can see it in a couple of their developments. They only did at just really two of them. Uh, Embassy was the first one. That's where I live, right in the in the Scottsdale Garden Apartment District, which was part of the 2007 assessment that the city put together that uh, that basically laid out by name which buildings in the in all of Scottsdale should be uh, kept and preserved. Um, but it was, wasn't was until, I guess, much, much earlier that I really started liking that their designs because they did another development that almost everybody would love to live in. It's called, it's called Royale Gardens. They have one on Chaparral and, and Scottsdale Road and then one on 24th Street in Camelback. And when you go in, if you don't really know the architecture and you're not big on, and you don't, you would almost miss it. But the third or fourth or fifth time you go in there, you'll notice that only the first 10 of them are really, truly contemporary, modernist, large 2,300 square foot, uh, you know, uh, condos. They're built from reinforced rebar. They had copper pipes. Uh, they had this pool house that is looks like a, you know, like a spaceship landed. It's so googie is the style of architecture. Uh, but they could only get on both of those properties or those those uh, developments. They only were able to build the first ten on each of them, and then Del Trailer came and broop, finished them all off. He was but he he built with wood and built really fast. And the Maloofs they had you know just incredible incredible taste with their residential, but it just it never worked. It never worked for them, so they just decided the next best thing would be strip malls, and they did extremely well with that. Uh, they recently sold Papago Plaza, if you remember that place. Indeed. Yeah. So is, it, I don't, is it still standing? No, I was, it's gone. It that's what I thought. I thought it was an empty lot now. Yeah, I know they're almost finished with the new stuff in there. It's crazy. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, during COVID, it's like I haven't really been traveling that much. So. Yeah. yeah. No, it's the, that, that whole part of Old Town Scottsdale, south of Old Town, is changing so fast. And... You know it's good because we we need that we need that infill 
and we need people that density on that part of the street, but uh, or that part of town. But the, there's a couple of very uh, well. There's the original bowling alley for Scottsdale, which is on Scottsdale Road, right there where the new Dunn Brothers is. I don't oh, know if right. you noticed that. And then across the street on that side, there is it's called it's the Turney Chiropractors Clinic right now, but it was originally a bank. Very, very modern. Uh, you can tell when LA Fitness built their their facilities, they wanted they pro were probably really, really wanted to get all the way out to the corner. But whoever of that attorney is, they kept they they stood their ground. And so there's this beautiful, tiny little super modern bank. I just love it so much. I, I really I'm I'm concerned. We're gonna try and get it on the next uh, on the next calendar for to to discuss uh, at Historic Preservation Commission. Just to get everybody on the same page, because that was a real cool, fancy part of town. It was real. You got gussied up and go go bowling, and there was where Antique Trove is now. That was a little uh, market. I mean, there was just right. this would have been so cool to live back then. <laughs> now, my friend Mike said that a lot of the trees that Winfield Scott planted were actually wind barriers. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm sure there were. I mean, there were there were tons of different trees, but the way the city had explained it to me just recently is they they thought that all of trees, you know, that did, birds didn't get like, I don't know what they were thinking because- No, because birds love all of trees because yeah, there's fruit things they can eat. Is, and they shit all over and then they've, they, now you've got 10 more olive trees like 500 feet away, I know. I don't know what the idea was, but but maybe it was wind barriers and somebody just got it mixed up, but I don't know if they're very, if olive trees would be a wind barrier tree. Is that what we're talking about? Or was there a different tree that they used? No, no way. It was the olive trees. It's like, it's oh. like over here where Chris on is, there was another type of tree that um, they planted initially when it was a farm as well. So I know that was popular just to build, to have something to protect. Yeah, sure. On those Definitely. prairie winds just dashing yep. through. Yep. Yep. Desert winds. All right. Yeah. So question five, what, ne what was the name of the Epic pool party? that took over the Hotel Valley Ho in the mid 2000s. Did anybody get this one? Poolside, anyone? Does anyone remember 944 Magazine? I mean, come on, really? Oh, I remember 944. We used to have these pool parties there. We did them for five years in a row. One year we brought Boy George over. One year we brought Paul Oakenfold. I mean, the best DJs ever would come to the Valley. And this is before the guys bought it. Uh, it was right at the tail end of of the of the era. There was a there was another building where the standard, the apartment complex sits. There was the the Ramada Inn, so it was the Ramada Valley Ho. And I, I mean, they said that there were no historic structures in there. I beg to differ. I mean, there's they had this porte cochere in this building that was the conference room right on the corner where the standard is. Came right up to the corner, and it had this sort of you know tiki style. Port Corsair. I mean, it was so cool. It was so cool. So, but this torn down to the ground, but yes, poolside. Yes. And you know, and it's, and I'm sure that soon the pool at the Valley Ho will be swinging again. Oh yeah. Like right now, probably it's packed over there already. And so, and you know, and even, and I'm sure, um, even with um, Tiki Oasis happening, it's like everybody's still fully masked. So. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I mean, just everyone's taking precautions to try and stay their healthiest. All right. So the area behind the Valley Ho is called? That's called the Scottsdale Garden Apartment District. It was originally coined that term by Debbie Abel, who is the former Scottsdale Historic Preservation Commission officer. Uh, I met Debbie Abel right around the time that she would have been compiling this a couple of years before that, I, I was invited to rent a space at, at, uh, at this office studios, five C that my friend, Mike Rumpleton had designed, but Grady Gavage Jr. Had his office on the top. So he invited a few other people to, you know, rent, you know, sublet those suites up there. Do you know the building? It's so cool. Yeah. Uh, and so Debbie Abel was working then, I believe for the city and just had some, Really, the, the the what she put together with another gal who was her intern at the time, Liz Wilson, who now is a uh, historic preservation officer for the city of Phoenix. She uh, contributed to this. You can find it online. All you have to type is Scottsdale post-war uh, multifamily housing assessment. So you have to put in multifamily housing and post-war. You could find it. It's about 40 pages and it is the 
it's a page turner. Even though it's like a technical business document for the city and an assessment, the way that they wrote it and and the thought that they put into it really, I mean, I got that from Steven Venker, you know, when I met him the day that I met him, he gave me that. And it had been sitting out there for 10 years before I actually saw it because I had just moved to LA when it came out. And I just thought, we got to do this now. We've got to revisit this now because of all of the infill going on in, in Phoenix. There's no more sprawl. They, the developers can't go out any further. You know, they've got to start coming back in. So, uh, but that was five years ago. So yeah, Scottsdale Garden Apartment District, there's 18 buildings. Uh, they're called uh, garden apartments. That's the that's the name of the style of architecture. But uh, they were originally, you know, they're not called garden apartments because they're necessarily apartments. That's just the kind of the standard. That's what the feds kind of files them away as. But uh, for all intents and purposes, the ones that were built here, they were all motels. Actually, they called them motor inns uh, when they when they opened, they didn't call them motels. And, and the, the Valley Ho actually opened as the Valley Ho Motor Resort. People loved their cars so much that they wanted to drive them almost right up to their you know, hotel room. And they were allowed to do that. You know, that's that's what these buildings were originally. That's how they looked. They're very, very in and out. Indeed. That's a little map that Carrie Wheeler did. She's so cool. I, I love that map. So yeah, no, it's a great little map. And you can find that I know on the Facebook page for yep. the Scottsdale Garden Apartment District. Yep. At Scottsdale wow. Garden Apartment District. Uh, we also have a website. And uh, you know, if anybody's interested, you can sign up on on our website and get on our mailing list. We need as many people to support us as possible. <laughs> and why? Why do you need people to support you? Well, a lot of things have changed since COVID, as you might have, as you might assume, or you might like be like, duh, you know, a, a lot of the budgets that the cities had to spend on things like historic preservation have been cut, slashed, they're gone. Who knows when they'll be back? Uh, we were just informed yesterday that the HRER grant, which is still remains available to people in houses, that the HRER grant will not be available for to people in condos. So, uh, I don't know what we're going to do. I think we're going to re we're going to quickly re uh you know regroup and then I need to find somebody to nominate us but we'll probably make a run then for the National Register of Historic Places and I feel pretty confident that that we would get get in, you know, get get accepted and get nominated. I think all of that is is you know in my mind it's been done already, you know. Now I want to know, you know, who's going to help us fix these buildings up. Uh, about in, in about the same time that that assessment came out, um, Marshall, the, the, there was this really period where, you know, I think every market in America was so, sort of taking a closer look at multifamilies. And this is, this was a building that was really kind of thrown to the side in, in the 1970s and 1980s. Hundreds of them went up all over town. There were, they were a multi-use building. They were, they were, kind of given to us by two architects from uh, Pasadena that came up with this as a solution to the housing crisis after the war. They were, they were cheap and tasty to build. They didn't cost a lot of money. We know that VAs, a lot of the vets that built them here, uh, they lived at the hotel. They had a little, their, their suites or their homes were right behind their check-in desk. I'm sure there were a lot of families that were raised here in, in these, in these, you know, kind of mixed use hotel environments. Pretty cool. So, you know, but back then, people didn't just come out here for a weekend. They didn't just come out, you know, from LA for you know a, a weekend. They came out and they they would stay for a couple of weeks. That was a little bit more appropriate. Um, you can still find the remnants and the relics of the of the hotel life. Just recently, I found over at Shalimar Sands uh, by the pool was the original Jack plug-in set. The whole device was still in the ground uh, that you could plug in a four prong phone to. You just bring the phone right out by the pool back then. You just take right, the phone. Right, you would have brought your your house phone. Yep. Yeah. And plug it in so that we get calls poolside. Well, how decadent is that? I know it would have been so neat. Uh, the other cool thing is, you know, in, in every part of the country, the the garden apartment has has uh, really been decimated. There, you can always spot them because of the style that they're built. They're usually no more than two or three stories. And they're post and beam, right? So post and then beam. So they're just usually flat top buildings, and and of course they're 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 important to us because they're not building that way anymore. They're they're never going to build that way again. 
and as a as a, as almost like a I don't know, just like a science project to look at the people that kind of it's so interesting. Anytime that I've lived in one of these buildings, I've been lucky enough to live in a couple of them. I'll move in, and because of the way that they're built around a you know pool, everybody gets to know each other. You are having barbecues, you are not right. Uh oh. It appears we may have lost Ben. All right. Well, when we get that figured out, let's go ahead and take a look at question seven. So now this raises questions. So, question seven. What prolific architect designed Deo? Now it's attributed to Ralph Haver, and Ben and I have talked about this, and it happens with a lot of times architects because, or a lot of other companies, because Haver was the company name. And one of the caveats is, is that it was other staff actually doing the work. So it may be attributed to Haver, but it's like when you look at like even like the Contiki which was over on 24th and Van Buren. It's like that was a Haver building, but we do know the original building was designed by James Salter, who was a staff member of Haver. And so that kind of muddies the water a little bit when you get that. Now, the name Deo, it really does come from, indeed, that song, Deo. So it's going to be a lot of fun when we do our tour. Um, I'm actually hoping to maybe even play a little bit of music as we wander around to kind of get people back on track to what they're kind of where the namesake. Um, and when we go by Los Cuatros playing Greenfield, which was the Brothers Four, was their huge hit song. All right. So who designed Scottsdale's first town hall? Well, it's someone's name that you heard earlier, Big Gonzalez. Now he designed as I, I didn't realize he'd also done kind of the whole planning for that civic plaza. I mean, I knew he did the library, the town hall. Um, I used to work and he actually did a lot of libraries, not just Scottsdale, but he did Nogales Library. Um, I used to work for City of Phoenix and worked in a couple of Benny Gonzalez buildings. And so he had a very West style of design. Um, there's also a building, I think it's on Bethany home. It used to be the medical group. It used to be a medical doctors, um, like their kind of their professional organization, those meetings. So, um, so yeah, so I mean, it's like, so yeah, so I mean, we had Benny Gonzalez who was out there designing all kinds of things. Oh, and there Hi. is, hello, guys, no worries. So we were talking about Benny Gonzalez and the fact that he did so many different things. I mean, he did libraries kind of across the state. Yeah. As well as, um, a lot of not just the Scottsdale Civic Plaza, but a variety of other buildings around. Um, we know he did Los Cuatros and very much. It was a really a Southwest style. Oh, and it looks like we may have lost Ben again. You know, that's kind of the beauty. The fun of technology is some days it works. Some days you're kind of on your own. And so, all right. So let's go on to question nine. And so question nine is Natalie Wood. Now we do know with Natalie Wood, um, if you do go to the ballroom, she married her husband there in the ballroom, hence the Natalie Wood ballroom. And I do know that 
they did recently open up her murder investigation again. Um, she drowned on a boat. Well, not on a boat. She fell overboard. Or that's the story that is told. Is it that what happened? And so you can still find flashes. Um, if you go actually on the second floor, kind of just above the lobby, there is a great hall that has a, a bunch of historic photos of the Valley Ho and some of the celebrities. Now, not all of them, but they do have quite a view, kind of a stack of things that don't wind up on the wall. But uh, it was the resort. And when, as we talk about that garden apartment district, those were, as Ben said, those were all kind of motor lodges that were intended for folks that really wanted to, that couldn't afford to stay at the Valley Ho, but still wanted to be classy. So they would stay there in these late fifties buildings that were super modern. And the Valley Ho would even have run specials to entice them to come and hang out and to spend their money at the Valley Ho, but not if, even if they didn't have a room there to still kind of come and hang out. All right, and then, you know, and here's another prominent architect um, who designed the Valley Ho. The architect was Ed Varney. He did a variety of buildings from, gosh, I mean, he did family housing out in Goodyear. Um, he actually, on the Goodyear campus, did one of his earliest buildings, which is still intact out there. But then he did um, things like the Quobido Chevrolet. Um, which is the old paper heart, which is over on Grand Avenue and was a super mod car dealership. I mean, that was kind of the style of architecture that it did was these really kind of cutting edge of the moment. I mean, as you can see in the Valley Ho, that it was oh so contemporary. And as Ben said, it indeed was designed for um, the motor car. So that way you could literally drive almost up to your room and move everything in. You didn't, you no longer had to come into a lobby and then wander around through the hotel. It really was designed for you to pull up almost to your front door of your room and unload. And so we're going to be taking a walk through that neighborhood actually tomorrow um, through with Tiki Oasis. Ben and I are hosting a tour of that neighborhood. Now we've talked about doing this at other times. So let me know if you would be interested in, in participating in going on one of those tours and really getting a chance to explore a different side of Scottsdale that they don't really necessarily talk a lot about. It's kind of that, I mean, it was found in the early 50s, but then by that fi those late 50s, so many folks were coming here to take advantage of one of the five C's, that climate, getting away from the sun, getting away from that snow and being able to come here and enjoy the sun, the pool, and just get away from cold, chilly snow. So Ben, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our tour. So we're going to have a lot of fun on that. Um, let me know if any of you would be interested in going on one of those tours as well. So now I always like to ask, how did folks do? Because, you know, part of the fun of this is that you might not, you know, I guess if we did a post, a pre-test and a post-test to kind of assess how people were doing. So, you know, you might not gotten a lot of them right. Oh, and there we have been again. That's so weird. I don't know what just happened. Sorry, guys. Nope, no worries. You know, modern technology, some days. And so, yeah, so people actually, um, did you want to add anything? I mean, I talked a little bit about, let's go back. Um, I talked a little bit about the Valley Ho and how really it was yeah. those, fo a lot of times it was people who were coming here to get away from their climate, to come enjoy yep. our climate. Yep, yep. 
Really totally true. A lot of Midwesterners, lots of people from back East and, uh, you know, and a fair share of people from California when the, you really wanted to get away, when you really wanted to escape. I think that this, it's fair to say this would be the place that you'd go. Yeah. Indeed. You know, there was a, it's funny. I don't know if you've ever heard about this perfumer that used to be in next to BS West. Have you no. Heard of it? So this gal makes specialty perfumes. It is in that same courtyard that like that the restaurant goes out onto. But uh, she made perfumes and, and she lived there or she lived in the neighborhood, but she was there for a very long time. I went in and she made me a cologne in like literally 1996. Okay. And she told me that she made perfume for Marilyn Monroe. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Indeed. Now, someone does ask if we're going to have the Winfield condos, which are famous for Bob Crane on the tour. And those aren't, they're a little too far out of the way for us to get to. Yeah, they are. They're a little so, bit out of the way. So initially I was going to try and fit them on, but you know, it just didn't really fit with the scope and kind of the amount of time we have for the tour. But indeed, I mean, Bob Crane was murdered there. Um, and I think it's actually still unsolved. Yeah, they did a lot of crazy things out here. <laughs> Lots of crazy things went down in Scottsdale, right? Indeed. As, as well as I heard there was this crazy pool party over the Valley Ho in the mid 2000s. Oh, are we going to go back to that? <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was like the dumbest thing. But it was so fun. But there were so many people. And every year the city would give us that permit. And every year they'd send the cop. Like one year the ponies came in. They literally brought, they came over on, on in horses. And split, split the party up. Oh, there's just there's just all kinds of just crazy stuff going on in that hotel, man. And not just that either. It's you know it was it was it was time for it was time for somebody to buy it and fix it up. Let's just put it that way. And they did an amazing job because I mean that hotel is beautiful. Yep, yep. It's fun. We found some brochures that the Hotel Valley Ho must have done maybe like in conjunction with. A couple of the of the uh, you know little hotels over here, because they they make it feel like they all know each other, like they're all really good friends. So it's a brochure for the for the for the rentals in the in the Garden Apartment District, but it's an offer and an invitation to still go to the Valley Ho to have a few drinks. Nice, so, yeah. Well, Ben, thank you so much. I mean, it's you like so I always I always ask how, how people did. I mean, it looks to be, I mean, Sarah and Jeff got four or five out of 10. Wow. Anita, who um, she got 10 or eight out of 10. Cool. So, yeah. So, I mean, but, you know, and I said, you know, if we did kind of a pre and post test, I'm uh -huh. sure those scores would be very different because now they have stories to attach to those answers. Yeah. And that's really the fun of doing this is, is that by the end of it, we are all winners. And thank you so much for having me on the show. It's been really fun. I'm glad. It's always fun to talk about Scottsdale. You know, exactly. There's And there's so many stories everywhere you go. That's yep. kind of the beauty of it. True. So, so Ben, I will see you tomorrow. Sounds good. Adios. So, thank you adios. very much. Have a great night until All right, tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. So that was so much fun, getting a chance to talk about some of that modern history of Scottsdale. So now maybe you were thinking, why should I share? Now you see why you should share. I mean, the fact that we got a chance to talk about kind of that mid fifties history, all kinds of fun stuff. So indeed, Sarah, I love the stories as well. So that's the whole reason why I really even started doing this history happy hour. So now we come to one of my, well, near and dear. You know, I talk about how I moved here from New York City. But you know, what people don't realize is I started in a little tiny town in Indiana of about 25 people. From there, I got myself through college. Then I moved to New York City, where there were more people on the floor of my apartment building than in my entire town that I grew up in. And so from there, it was time to go for an adventure and hello, Arizona. And so I'm also working on a book called Little Arizona. 
And so tonight we are going to talk about a little town called Antares. Now, Antares is named for the star Antares, which is in the Scorpio constellation. And it is a Greek word that means rival of Mars. And, and, I, and I love, it's like Anita is still saying, it's like her husband, Mike, is swearing that that is grandma's car. I would not be shocked at all. I mean, this is a vintage postcard. So they just took a snapshot one day and there you go. Oh, or do you mean the one that's here that you can see the fins? Because you said a nomad. Oh, so it's probably that light blue one right there with the white fins. Ah, I bet you wish you still had that car. So anyway, so Antares is in Mojave County, was first recorded back in 1926, and is right on historic Route 66. Has a population now of under 150 people. So it's a tiny little place. Now, it has over 6,000 mining claims, although most of them have been shuttered. Um, they're only a little over 200 that are still active. Now it was copper, gold, lead, silver. It was not just copper, which is one of the five C's. It was a variety of things that were mined there. Now it first got, it came to fruition because of the railroad. Back in the 1880s, when they were plotting the railroad, they actually did a wide, long curve to get the train to Kingman. And then as they were planning the old national trail, which then became route 66, that's when Antares got its name and really shows up for the first time back in 1923, just before route 66 is put in. I mean, and you can see, and there is the railroad still running right next to it. Now it has, it is famous for Giganticus Hedicus, which is a huge tiki head that was added by an artist in town to kind of give it a little panache, which it does. And if you've never gone to go see Giganticus Hedicus, it is well worth a trip to go visit it. Um, also, Antares is said there's no way to prove that Gene Roddenberry was traveling through town and came up with the name Antares from the town. So who knows if he was driving through or if he came up on his own with that name. But that's kind of the local lore is that he was traveling through town and decided to name a ship after the town. So next week we have Alberto Olivos. And he is going to be talking about Aztec history right here in Arizona that is still around. Um, it's going to be so much fun. He's a great guy and so knowledgeable about this. So it's going to be a lot of fun chatting with him and getting some of his stories. So look forward to seeing you all right back here. Same bat time, same bat channel. Now, remember, if you have stories, suggestions, comments, feel free to, you can either put those in the chat or you can reach out to me through email, Instagram, Facebook, whatever makes you the happiest. I am happy just to hear from you. And, you know, who knows what stories people are going to come up with. That's always kind of the fun of this. So also um, we are doing, and actually this is the wrong one. It actually second week of second Saturday of May, we will have our last haunted Phoenix history tour walking around town. So you can find information on that at hiphistorian.com. Um, I always want to give a shout out to Chris and Cole who did that intro sweeping across my desk. Um, Cole wrote the music and that intro as Chris did that amazing video. And I always want to give a shout out to PJ Vader Baron, my cocktail advisor. Um, we heard from Mr. Host Orgastratica earlier. He also does my outro music and it is set to um, 
found film footage. So kind of like the, when the little landing strip we did before the show was Western fashion in Scottsdale. Now I forgot to make a claim. They refer to those dresses with a particular name that is now no longer used. We actually call those iconic Southwest outfits patio sets. So again, I want to thank you all so much for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your night and amazing weekend. And, you know, I hope to see some of you over at the Hotel Valley Ho because we're going to be having so much fun this weekend. Oh, my gosh. Just you wait. Oh,